Hello and welcome to The Wedding Show, our weekly chat show all about weddings. To get involved in the conversation, simply leave a comment or questions in the comment section below. This show is brought to you in association with My Wedding Store. My Wedding Store, in case you didn't know, is a one-stop shop for all your wedding needs. For more information, check out myweddingstore.e, incorporating retail, hire and wedding services. In this week's episode, we're talking about dancing the night away to your wedding DJ. And we have two and a half wedding DJs here with us tonight. <laughs> Scruffy Duffy of Scruffy Duffy Entertainment. How are you, Scruff? I am absolutely brilliant, Richard. Thank Thanks for joining much. us. Thank you very much. And of course, Michael Dunn, aka DJ Baldy Mick. Richard, how are you? I'm good. I'm yeah, good. I'm, I'm wearing my DJ hat tonight for a uh, change. <laughs> good. It's been a while. And I'm referring to the other half uh, DJ in the background there, Brian McDermott. Uh, who's running the show behind the scenes is our executive producer, Brian McDermott. He's got an executive producer now. Yeah, well, we, you know, he's, he's, getting, he's getting paid more, so we have to do. Um, just remember, guys, the show is being produced live, but if you happen to miss any bits, you'll be able to watch it back on the MyWeddingStore.ie YouTube channel. So we're going to get straight into it, guys, and we're going to start with the first question I have is, uh, what's the main benefits of a wedding DJ? I suppose, Scruffy, talk to us about kind of Scruffy Duff Entertainment and your experience as a wedding DJ. How long have you been a wedding DJ? Well, I've been at it, actually, uh, because I was coming out... Uh, Easy now, Scott. I've been Easy at it, now. I know, this is frightening. Easy I'm now. at it nearly 27 years. Wow, oh my God. that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, what age did you start when you were 12? Uh, actually, I started when <laughs> I was 20. 20. <laughs> 20. Yeah, 20, yeah. Good. 1989. So I've seen a lot of changes, a yeah. lot of changes over the years, yeah. So, I, listen, when I started, I started in the clubs. Uh, after the clubs then, I... Tell, tell them the story how you started, Scott. I started in... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is he going to be doing this all night? Yeah, He's yeah, going to be setting me up for kind of nothing. Well, he knows come. because he was there with me. Tell him the yeah. story. Tell him the story. And uh, there used to be a legend of a DJ in Ballina called um, Ray Mac, and uh, Ray decided to stay a little bit extra on holidays in Spain. And at that time, right, I was uh, good friends with a lad called Johnny Collins, and he legend in, a, a legend legend in, in his himself. own right. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And he, uh, I was kind of up and down to his house. And I, I had told him that I was doing DJ work in Sligo, which was an absolute lie at the time. So was, <laughs> but anyways, it got me down into his sitting room. Never we, DJed before yeah, in life. It got me down into his sitting room. Uh, I spinned a couple of tracks. I learned very quickly. And I was watching Ray Mack for, uh, for, you know, for at least maybe six months. Had a good idea of his set. I kind of memorized it. And Johnny said, listen, we've known us to do uh, Bleak Castle. We need you to do it. So my first gig in Bleak Castle, about four... 500 people downstairs wow. in the dungeons and I was using Ray Max records. <laughs> because, Fantastic. It was because vinyl, they, wasn't it? It, was vinyl, it would right, have been yeah. vinyl back then, yeah. And Johnny Collins' his wife was down in the DJ box and she was handing me the records up and I was just putting them on and I just, I took two, like a duck to water, yeah. And Fantastic. I, I, I've never looked back. Fantastic. Yeah. And Mick, we say, well, how long are you, like, since you're, you're taking it out on Scruff here, but how long are you a DJ? I've been DJing since 99. I didn't get into it until 99. No. A friend of mine had a pub in Ballinas. 1899? Yeah. Yeah, 1899. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says to me one night, he says, do you fancy doing a bit of DJing for me? It was New Year's Eve. Mm. And I says, yeah, yeah, no problem. So he gave me 60 quid. We went up town and I bought now and now and now three of the now CDs. Now that's what I call music. And Johnny Collins again. He hired the gear off Johnny Collins. So, and it, it was, it was back then you had the, the mixer on top and the trays for the, the, the CDs were underneath, yeah. And you had button one to open, button two to open, tray one and two. But the power button was in the middle of the two of them. <laughs> so three times that night, I pressed the power button back. <laughs> so it was. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody would turn and look at you, and you're like, "The hotel cut me power." That was it. Yeah, that's how I started back in, in Ballina as well, back in '99. Uh, very good, very good. I suppose look, you, you've probably seen, we we'll say, the the move from vinyl to CD and so on, and and the move to digital now. We we'll say. Like, what, I suppose, like, when people say wedding DJ, you know, what, what is a wedding DJ compared to, we we'll say, uh, um, like a band that, you know, do the DJing for the, the, well, for listen, the ender? Uh, listen, the way, the, the way I look at that is this, right, yeah. Uh, uh, it doesn't happen overnight, right? It's a skill. A DJ mm -hmm. is a skill, right, yeah. And there's a skill in knowing a room, reading a room, playing the right tunes. And then you have to have, uh, you have to be able to, uh, it's, it's to know when to play the right sets, like at the right time. Uh, and that comes with practice. That comes with a lot of failures as well, right? Yeah, yeah. because uh, sometimes crowds, you know, mightn't go particularly your way, right? Yeah, but uh, you have to be able to step up a gear, right? Yeah, and change it very, very quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and you have to have all the tricks of the trade. And these are tricks you learn over many, many years of doing many, many gigs, you know. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's all redone to one word, and that's its interaction. 
Mm-hmm. People absolutely love it, so they're right. And the more interaction you give them, right, the more they'll respond. If you allow people in any environment to sit down and go to the bar, or go to the smoking area, if you allow them to go there, that's where they'll go. Mm. But if you make it interesting, you make it high energy, you make it very, very interactive, you play the right sets at the right time, you do your homework, you're sitting there watching the band, what, what's the band playing, you're taking your notes, you put a lot of work in. Uh, the sign of a really good DJ is a DJ that makes it look simple. Because believe you me, right, it's not simple, right? It, yeah. it's, there's a lot of work goes into it, right? Yeah, right? And anybody that tells you that they can go up and just put the CDs on, it's 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 not that simple. There's a lot of work in it, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. And like we say, it's it's there's been quite that move. Like, would you be mainly kind of cities, or have you moved? I'm still old school. I, I yeah. am I am old You're school. I am vital. the last of the dinosaurs. Uh, but there's there's a reason for that. Yeah. Now I am in the process of slightly thinking about going digital. I have made the move yet, and I tell you why. Uh, I like the idea of flicking through my CDs. I like to mm-hmm. know where things are, right? I'm old school in the way, thinking stuff, right? So I like to have my uh, hands-on approach. And I find sometimes that, you're, uh, that you're, you're more involved with your work if you're flicking through something, you're looking at something, you're feeling it, you're flicking, and there's a, a particular track there that can lead me down a particular type of set. Mm-hmm. Can you, you get might, that? You might play it there and then, but you might play it... 20 minutes time yeah, and, you yeah. know. Uh, and I find uh, can you get that kind of uh, feeling with a, uh, um, a computer uh, I don't know yet I, I still yeah. have to be convinced and that's why I'm the last probably of the ones to sit back plus I'll be honest with you I'm not super techie yeah. right so it's a big I mean when you've been doing something such a long time a certain way and it works for you yeah. uh, I'm off the old school of thinking well listen if it's not broke don't fix it but, yeah, definitely try and make it better but if it's not broke don't fix it right? So yeah, you, you've been reinventing yourself every five six years I'm always, a year. I'm always at something, year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always at something. Years, the I business mean. is so competitive at the moment that if you're not coming up with something fresh and something new all the time right? Yeah, you will be left behind there are some great live acts out there at the moment whether it be a band or DJs or singing waiters and stuff, right? So you've got to be able, right, Chad, to turn your hand to... Uh, you've got to be multitasked in the wedding business at the moment to survive, right, yeah? And to be able to give someone a top a top class show, you've got to be off that You're thing. talking about your, your extended, your full-day package well, type of thing. listen, I... Oh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. So you just... So, yeah, so I'm a, I, I, I'd be the first one to say I'm a jack-of-all-trades, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And I've had to be like that, right? Uh, to stay in the business, to stay up there, to, you know, to try and be one of the leading guys up there. Right? There's yeah. a lot of competition out there, and you've got to be reinventing the wheel all the time. Plus, to be honest, I actually enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge of coming up with new ideas. I'm always looking for something different. Yeah, uh, it's always just something to me. Even though when you know business will be good, things are going good, I'm always at the back of my mind. I'm always thinking, listen, what's the next trick? What's the next thing I can come up with? You know, yeah. uh, and I think if you have that type of thinking, you know, you're going to improve your business. Um, you know you're going to improve yourself going forward. That's the way I like to think, you know. Oh, very good, very good. Um, I suppose we'll say one common thing I would, I would have thought is, do you get a lot of guests kind of telling you what to play or do you kind of, is it literally to trust in you to do the right music well, and to play the music? There's or? two, there's two, there's two ways of thinking of, like, uh, of uh, there's two ways of thinking of uh, like that, right? And the way I think of this, right, um, you know, would you go into a kitchen and tell a chef how to cook a meal if you're out for a meal? Probably not. So, first of all, if you go onto someone's website or Facebook page, you look at their testimonials, right? Yeah, right. You see previous brides have come up and said, "Listen, this guy has done A, B, C, and D." Yeah. First of all, that's the first thing that's going to tell you. Okay, this this guy knows kind of what he's yeah. about. When you get talking to them, then right, and you say, "Listen, you know, uh, you know, this is the way like I do my show. Am I open to music? I am, right? You play me certain tracks, but in in my professional opinion, I don't think that track's going to work, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't have time to experiment." Yeah. With with uh, with the gig, uh, so uh, I like to stick to what works with you. Now, for example, I did a wedding there with Brian actually at the weekend, and the groom specifically asked me to play uh, Metallica, "Run with the Hills." Every uh, fiber in my body went. I don't know about that one, right? Yeah, he said scruff. So we talked about it. He reassured me it was part of the side night. He said scruff. Trust me, this will work. So we came to a compromise. So I played one minute and 36 seconds of it before it went into absolute mayhem, right, yeah? But it worked because we talked. I listened to the track beforehand. I, uh, I knew when to play it. I knew what set to play it with. And I, most important of all, I knew when to cut it. Mm. And that's experience. That's, that's kind of yeah. what you get, that type of experience. But about playlists and people telling you to play this, 
uh, if I'm being honest, uh, I would take on board some of it, but I would definitely give you my professional opinion if I think it's going to work. And if I think it's not going to work, um, I, I won't play it. And um, would you get a lot of kind of, I think it comes back to kind of what Brian was saying with wedding, wedding bands especially, like is it a case where you kind of recommend people to come and see you live to see kind of the experience? Uh, um, do you get a lot of referrals that way? Or? An awful lot of my referrals would come where somebody has been to my show, they've seen what I do, mm. they've experienced it, said, whoa, that's high energy, boy, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. So a lot of people in that respect uh, would come or, uh, and then they say, listen, you've got to see this guy, you've got to see what he does right yeah." They'd go to the Facebook page, they'd look at the videos, they'd look at the testimonials. Then after talking to you, you know, then people would, would come, uh, would, would nearly come to a, uh, a decision. Yeah, listen, you're exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, do, do people come to see me? Um, very rarely, very rarely. It's mostly to come to see, uh, mostly to come to see the band. Sort of, mm. which, yeah? um, now, in saying that, I would always recommend people to come and see me, yeah. but for some strange reason, uh, people don't. But an awful lot of my work is done on, you know, people have seen the show, yeah, exactly. uh, they've experienced it, they say, listen, book this guy, you certainly won't be disappointed, you know. Yeah. So that's the way it works for me, sort of, you know. Mick, what about you? Like, you, I, you you're a DJ for many years, like we say, do you find that it's kind of people seeing you doing DJing at different places and all that, that kind of yeah, refers I, work? Yeah, I've a lot of people coming up to me um, these days and possibly over the last number of years that would have attended my gigs in some of the college pubs many years ago. I'm sure okay. you would have yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're of the age where they're getting married yeah. and they remember back to their college days and the crack we used to have in the pubs and the music that we used to play, the music mm. that we played would be similar in styles um, and the interaction would be similar. Yeah. And, you know, they want you to do exactly the same thing yeah. at their wedding. Actually, funny enough, uh, <coughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. For Mick, uh, uh, our style is, um, is rare at the moment because uh, an awful lot of DJs out there at the moment, uh, 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 a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, not particularly strong. Maybe a lot of the guys don't like talking on the microphone or don't like interacting. So... Uh, we're we're kind of old school interactive in that yeah. way, and it works. Mm. It works. It's the bottom line. Right? People like to have fun. People like to interact. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of you know. Just because a, a, lot, a lot of guys may have started DJing in their bedrooms and then progressed onto nightclubs and stuff, yeah. mm. where there's very little interaction with the crowd other than using their music, yeah. and that's great. And the, and the, yeah. the guys that do that and that can do that are absolutely fantastic at yeah. it and yeah. fair play to them. Yeah. yeah. But like Scrop said, some of them are quite shy and reserved. Yeah. To use them, a lot of the time because. They don't get the opportunity <laughs> yeah. to, to do it. But I, I think that, that's what separates like a DJ from a wedding DJ, you know, and that a, a wedding crowd is a different crowd to a nightclub or yeah. to, yeah, you know, that type of an audience. You, you're, you're dealing with people who are after watching a band, they've already been dancing for two hours and, you know, you're trying to get that energy back into them, you're trying to get that energy going again. So you do need somebody well, who's have going to... You to take into consideration every single person in the room. Yeah. And, I mean, what I, when I'm gigging or when I'm, when I'm DJing, I mean, the very last person I'm thinking of is me and what I'd like to hear. The mm. very, very last song that I'd play would be a song that I would want to hear myself if I was at, uh, if I was listening in the, in, the, in the van on the way home or whatever. Yeah. But you have to cater, try and cater for as many people as much of the time as possible. Okay. And, and yeah. whatever that requires, that requires. And how long, how long normally would they, would say, like a wedding... DJ play for like we we'll say you normally would start after the band. You know, that, that what depends time. if the photographer keeps the bride too long in the house. The morning <laughs> of the wedding. <laughs> oh, we're going back to the morning of the wedding now. Okay, yeah, that is okay. That's, yeah, that, it has that's a, a knock-on effect. It has a knock-on effect, and that's something that brides should be aware of. That if for whatever reason that they decide, um, for example, that and the makeup artists on a number of weeks ago said that they would recommend not letting the bride get their makeup done last mm. because then it delays the photographer who in turn delays the ceremony who in turn delays the hotel I just note I wasn't working with Mick last week so whoever he's getting at no, wasn't no, me no, no, no. it just, um, it, it just it, 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 there is a timeline and couples should yeah. try and stick to it if they want to get value for money from their band from their yeah, DJ exactly. listen, uh, uh, you know Richard and you know this as well Mick, yeah, right? Yeah. it's very rarely and I mean very rarely that a wedding goes on time yeah. and that's one thing I would actually say to brides relax oh yeah absolutely it, do, it doesn't matter if it doesn't go on time, yeah, right? exactly. the whole thing about the day is to relax 
and enjoy it and go with the flow right yeah you have booked these professionals right yeah you have full confidence in them let them do their job and they will not let you down right yeah mm. uh you know, you've you've done all the hard work, yeah. You've done all the groundwork, yeah. Enjoy your day because it is so quick. It goes so quick. Listen, I was best yeah. man for you with your wedding. <coughs> do you remember that, do you? I do, yeah. Yeah. I only converted and it the other 14 day. Fourteen <laughs> years ago. Fourteen years ago, and yeah. it was, it, it, I mean, and that's me looking from that perspective, looking down. It went, it went so quick. The day yeah. goes so quick. So, Absolutely. I, I always say to brides, enjoy it, yeah. And how long does it set? Well, listen, I'll give you an example, right? Yeah. Um, I would arrive there at the venue at um, half seven, eight o'clock. I set up with the band. So once the band finished, right, I, um, I kick in straight away. So, so there's no delay. That's so good. like there's no delay. Yeah, so the band absolutely. could finish it at, at um, 12 o'clock, quarter past half 12, between 12 and half 12. And then from half 12 onwards then uh, until about maybe half two in the morning. Sometimes mm. if you have a food and beverage manager who's in great form, he might give you um, an extra 15 minutes. And okay. But round about, it's about two hours to two hours and 15 minutes. Now, sometimes um, sometimes that can change because different, different provinces, like, I mean, mm. if you go up the north, uh, then right bands only play for uh, maybe two hours and you have to be aware of that as well. So, <laughs> and they will start at nine, they'll finish at 11 and then you've got to be there ready to rock and roll from 11, and then you would play extra uh, if you're, you know, further up the north, you know, up, up yeah. the top of Donegal and towards Derry, etc. Yeah. Uh, because that's the way they do things up there, right? Yeah, because they've got a different time scale in venues uh, mm. up the north. I, I thought you were going to say they're in different time zones. <laughs> you know, they they get different uh, different time scales like in the yeah, venues, exactly, you know. Exactly. So that and that's once again that's just doing your homework as well. But you've got to be there on time, set up once the band finishes. Yeah, ready to, uh, go. Yeah, ready to rock and roll. Okay. Then, right, yeah. Mick, anything on social media? How are we doing? Um, I just lost it there for a second, but it's back again now. <laughs> Lots of people watching and a couple of comments coming in as well, just to run through a few of them. Um, Emer Shovlin reckons, Scuff, you're the best DJ she's ever known. Oh, thank and you so much, Emer. I really appreciate that. Thank Big you shout so out much. to Dave. Dave is watching. Thanks for that, Dave. Fair Hi, Dave. play to you. Yo, Dave, what's um, happening, dude? Lloyd Bracken, have seen Scuffy many times. Great crack, in fairness, and works very hard to keep the crowd going. All the best, lads. Thanks very much. Cheers, Lloyd. Lloyd. Watching in, dude. Um, Hope all's good, mate. Miriam Galuli wants to know, and we'll cover this in a second, what Scruffy's favourite 80s song to play. So have <laughs> oh, a think about that. Absolutely, yeah. uh, Hilda crackers. Fallon, both, uh, <laughs> great crack, both of us at parties. Yes, we are. Sean Brown has joined us. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Uh, who else is there? Uh, Brendan Donovan has another question, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Brendan, Graham Cawley, two of the best... <laughs> two of the biggest legends Scruffy and Baldy and two reds to boot fair play to yeah. you Graham another great lad <laughs> and yeah Gavin Muldoon has joined us as well so what's your yeah. favourite 80s track Brian? Oh I mean you've got me with that one my favourite 80s track is um, um, R.E.M. Losing My Religion really? very good track yeah, yeah. actually I heard that on the radio this yeah. morning it's like deja vu um, yeah. what are, are you the second question there Mick? do you want to um, go to it? Okay, from Brendan Donovan, do DJs that sit in the corner just playing track after track with no interaction harm the DJ business? Uh, well, no, I tell you, it's not that they harm the DJ business, but they, they definitely don't do much for a wedding. Mm. Uh, because that, that, that there is like putting on a night pod yeah. or a night patsy. And it is, to be honest, it's, it's, it's pointless, really. Yeah. Because, because once again, it goes down to the same thing is that if you... If, if you allow people, um, do you know, to go to the bar, and you know, if if you're not commanding on yeah, stage, you're losing you're your audience. Yeah. Losing, and once you lose that audience, it is difficult to get them. Even 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 if you're on the ball, uh, and you're doing your gig, and you're on, you know, I mean, that a certain song could go wrong. You know, it could go so wrong. You've got to be constantly watching that and. Uh, uh, that crowd twenty four seven to make sure your sets are tight. Right? Yeah, it, I, I've seen it happen to me. You know. I might have taken the eye off the ball one night. I thought this set would work. I took it for granted. 30 seconds gone. But at least I had it, the tools to bring it back. A little bit of microphone. I hit the floor. Yeah. Whoa, sorry. Admit to them that you made a mistake. Right? Get back to basis. Do a little bit of emotional blackmail. Get the bride and groom out on the floor. A little bit of a train. Back on the floor. And uh, get the place rocking again. Yeah, yeah exactly. But can you get with that with someone who doesn't use a microphone? 
I'm afraid not, no. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's what difference is. Like we say, when we say wedding DJ, we're talking about, you know, a wedding DJ, like we say, in the terms of an MC and an yeah. entertainer. Yeah. Um, and, and it kind of leads us on to kind of what else that you do. Like we say, I've, I've done a wedding recently with yourself and you were kind of doing, uh, we say, like we, we know we say the American style now where, you know, the DJ is the MC for the day, yeah. he's the entertainer yeah. on the day and yeah. what. So like we say, the wedding we did um, at Graham and Kim's wedding a yeah. couple of weeks ago, if they're watching, hi, and Graham and Kim. And um, basically you introduced in the bride and groom, you had kind of party games in between as well. Yeah. It was constantly nonstop from when your function started right through right to the through, disco, yeah. which is fantastic. You must I mean, be exhausted at the end of it. Yeah? I tell you, listen, I abs- that show has been a blessing from the sky because uh, I really enjoy it. And I tell you why, what it does, right, yeah, it sets the wedding up for mm. the day, right, yeah. And uh, during the meal, um, it can be a little bit on the sluggish side. And uh, and for years, people have been, and listen, you've got some great entertainment. You've got singing chefs and, you know, you've got singing chefs, you've got um, slapstick comedy, you've got hypnotists and magicians. They are all absolutely brilliant. And they come in, run about the desserts and they play, and they do a brilliant job, right, yeah. The, the difference in my show is that I come in right from the beginning, I MC into the room and a short burst high intense fun mm. in between the courses of the meal and it sets the day up for the day right yeah, yeah. and it's you've seen the show yeah, it's exactly. electric it's in fantastic. the room it's fun it's really what it's really what i'm all about it's it's really what i think a wedding should be it's fun you're there to celebrate your big day let's get this party rock run the lovely thing about it because i used to be a chef uh, many many years ago is that I know the dynamics of a kitchen I know the, uh, the dynamics of a room which it doesn't interfere with your food and that's why I was able to write this show specifically mm-hmm. for weddings uh, but uh, yeah it's going down really well it's going really well yeah. it's, it's something I really enjoy so this, you know. it was a fantastic wedding and I, I never forget it was the first wedding I've ever seen a bridesmaid do a backward flip yeah. during uh, one of uh, the uh, games uh, I was like everyone's going what just <laughs> happened <laughs> yeah, so yeah. and she did no, it again that normally so happens you, you'd be gone home by the time the DJ probably, and all yeah, the yeah. 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 must be yeah. well no this is just literally yeah. during the desserts I think it was yeah. around the desserts so it's it was this, fantastic this is towards the end of it because I do I, I, listen, I, uh, I do an entrance uh, I do a sing off uh, I split the room in half the bright side of the versus the grooms I do a quiz show I do a mini fashion show in the middle of it and then I do a lip sync battle game at the end right? Yeah. and really what it does it sets the wedding up energy wise you know sometimes you come out of the mean you're sluggish uh, the crowd is struggling to get going, right? Yeah, it can be even tough on the band as well, right? Because you're trying to get this place, you know, trying to get them going. It's sluggish, but it just sets the room up for a really yeah. good party, fun day. So it does. What did you say your favorite eighties song uh, was? Uh, yeah, losing my religion. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got yeah. the, I got the Do you know that one, Mick? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brilliant band. Brendan Tierney has joined us. Hi, Brendan. Nice to see. Uh, to Brendan. Tommy Elliott has joined us. Hey, Tommy. Barry Morley. Barry Morley has joined us. Um, yeah. Brendan Tierney has a question. Can I ask a question, Richard? Yep, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, um, Scruffy, full wedding show is something to behold. Never seen people dancing on chairs before. The soup came out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was at one or two of the wedding shows, so fair play to you. Um, what would be the most popular song to finish with at the end of a DJ set? Which? Oh, yeah, okay. I think what we're going to do, we're just going for a quick break and we'll give you your answer in about a few minutes. So stay pizzas, tuned. Pizzas have arrived, have they? No, Not no, yet. No, 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 no we're only halfway through. The Wedding Show is brought to you by MyWeddingStore.ie. Everything you need for your big day. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for uh, staying with us and uh, thanks for uh, joining us tonight um, as we're here with uh, Scruffy, Duffy and DJ Baldy Mick. Do you have to say it in like a DJ voice, like DJ Baldy Mick? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. You've you got a great voice for it's, DJ. It's, it, I've, I've, got a, I've got the man flu, so I can really right, do the okay. horse. I can do like the Don't whole Barry White. Don't be with the man flu now. Don't be, you know. I'm here with the lemon zip. Like yeah. a, <laughs> no, hot whiskey, actually. Hot whiskey be nice. Just want to give a couple of shout-outs. Um, big shout-out to Sinead Conlon McIntyre. Hi, Sinead. Us. Hi, Sinead. Uh, Ronnie Dignan has tuned in. I thought Ronnie would be on the beard hey, tonight. Ronnie. Ronnie. You're taking a break, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Mirren McDermott has joined us. Hi, Mirren. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Matthews, it's like the Super Bowl with the ads. Fair play to Trevor. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. sale if you want. If you want a spot on the show, sell, sell, sell. <laughs> we can sell you an ad. Uh, Brendan Tierney, uh, I mentioned Brendan already. Uh, yeah, we were saying there earlier on, Scruff, um, what is your favourite song to finish up with? Uh, I, I mix it up every so often. Yeah. The, the song I'm playing at the moment is um, Take That, Never never forget. Yeah. And, oh, then yeah, I, yeah. I, and, and then I come in with, uh, obviously, Hit, hit the Road Jack. I hit don't the Road Jack. Yeah, I don't play yeah. the National Anthem. I, I, you don't play the National Anthem anymore? No, I, don't, no I, don't, I haven't played it for years. Really? No, I right. don't. Okay. 
to I, people expect it or it's no, kind of I, video, I, I is it? Played, I'm, 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 last time I played that must be, must be 15 years ago. Well, okay. Yeah. I, I usually finish with either Journey or Time of My Life from Dirty Dancing, hit them with the national anthem and then two and a half minutes of Lulu shout. I, I actually have a question for you guys. Do you do slow sets? Sometimes. Sometimes. Does yeah. it depend on the crowd? It's kind it of depends on the crowd, yeah. Like, like it depends on the night. A young crowd or sometimes, an old crowd? Sometimes <laughs> what I would do is if the crowd have been dancing and the band are really good, which most of them are, and they're... <coughs> like Brian... Like, like, like Brian McDermott band, there. yeah. Like the Brian McDermott band. I tell you, and, that, is, and, and that, is, and that is a controversial statement. Like and, most and of them are. They're, oh, they're, 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 they're bouncing for 30 minutes or so, yeah. or 40 minutes. I find that if you come into them then with um, more fast music... It'll die. You'll yeah. lose the crowd. And so sometimes I would come in with a slow set hmm. for 15 minutes so that they get a chance to go to Lou, go to the bar, catch their breath. You get the, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a chance for the couples to have one more, you know, smooch around the Opportunity. Dance floor, you know. Listen, as I, as like I, the, no, like no, the old school, no, the boys no, on one side, I'm the girls on the other side. No, no, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to tell you the truth here, right? No, 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 and they do come out, they do come out, and then you, then you hit them after about 10 minutes, maybe two slow songs, and you hit them with something, and away you go again then. I, no, I, I don't play slow sets, I don't, I don't play, now if I'm doing a full wedding, I love to play a couple of waltzes and some jives, but no, I don't do slow sets, no, I listen straight in once, because the band has done a great job rocking it, they've handed you over this, you know, crowd, uh, floor rocking, uh, let's go straight into it after a wait. No, I'll change the set a little bit, but no, straight in rock, right, because you only have two hours, yeah, two, two, two and a half, two, you know, in, so saying, you, in saying that, if, we do, if I do come on late, then slow sets out the window. Yeah, so but if you, if you are doing a two, two and a half hour set and the band are rocking and the people have been dancing for, for three hours, then mm. yeah, I would come in with slow sets. Yeah. But like, I've been at weddings where you have a band which are more country or they're more kind of you know, traditional mm. um, and then you need a DJ to kind of line things up. So it's kind of that case where you kind of go straight into kind of the high energy music. For, for, for those type well, of events. We, we, we play um, uh, country music as well, and we play, uh, like you said, waltzes. If, if, if I'm doing a no, full... No, only, only if I'm doing... <laughs> only if I'm doing a full wedding. Full set. Yeah, only, only, only if, if I'm doing a full wedding. wedding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, otherwise... You yeah. don't have time. You no, don't have time. No, 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 no. But yeah, you'd hit them. You could hit them. You could start off with anything. You could start off with whatever's current in the charts, or you could go all the way back to... You know, popular classics like in the he, 70s and 80s. He, he would play the slow set and maybe go for a cup of tea and a slice of cake. That's I know, it's the like, oldest trick in the book, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's, that's not that's true, and you thinking. know it. Well, actually, that's not true. I would have got my cup of tea and slice of cake before I started. He does it, yeah, it's over it, yeah. Where's, where's Mick? Mick's over there where his cake is gone. <laughs> a couple of sandwiches, and they're all dancing to his slow set. Do, do, do you normally, like we say, would DJs just normally take a break? Do, 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 you oh, don't normally, you no. play right through, don't you? Oh, God, oh, no, 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 straight yeah. through, no, straight yeah, through, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> pushing buttons is hard. Well, uh, uh, speaking of which, okay, so yeah. we have the very controversial question. We say, what's the difference between a professional wedding DJ and a band that offered to do the disco? Ooh. That's that's you know that, that is uh, that is a um, that's a tough question. Mm. Basically, remember, remember Brian is sitting right there now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brian put down the stick. <laughs> And we've gone, uh, the and live the is finished. Gone. Feed is yeah. gone. Feed is gone. <laughs> no, ba basically, you're right, chat. Listen, this is just my own uh, yeah. way of looking at it, chat. Listen, um, listen, I'm in the game a long, long time. I, I, as I said, I'm in it 27 years and stuff, yeah, right? So, so I, I look at my skill, and I'm sure the rest of the guys, Trevor and, of course, uh, Lloyd and the guys out there watching other leaders will, will understand where I'm coming from. It, the band comes along doing an amazing job and they rock the floor. They do an absolutely amazing job. Mm. Right? Right? The bands, that's exactly what they will rock, right, yeah? So, you need somebody coming on fresh afterwards uh, with a, uh, a fresh approach, right, yeah, live, interactive, ready to work, right, yeah, come on afterwards, right, with their own sound system, completely focused in their ready to rock this place for mm. you. And that's really the main difference, right? Plus, listen, um, you know, a lot of, uh, there's, it's all down to packages as well, right, yeah, some people say, some people might, listen, I always say this, right, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a tough one to answer, right, yeah, mm. uh, without being controversial. But basically, right, uh, the band takes it to here and they've rocked the place, the socks of it, yeah, right, yeah, and they've done their job, right, yeah, yeah. and well done, right, yeah. 
So I'd like to think I'd come in afterwards, right, yeah, fresh, ready to go, and i take it to the next step. You know, because it's tough at the end because they're tired, it's a long day, you've yeah. got to be on the ball to do it, right, yeah. Uh, you've got to know your sets, you've got to know when to play it, right, yeah. Uh, working off and like, you know, uh, working off a kind of a playlist or and nobody talking on the microphone and nobody interacting with you, you will lose that crowd. Yeah. That is a fact. There is no easy way out of it, generally. If you're not interacting, if you're not talking, you if, listening, you're, if you're not playing the right sets like at the right time, you will lose that crowd to the bar. And what happens is that you've had this amazing day, the place is rocking, and sometimes, right, sometimes if that set doesn't work, but if you've got not someone reading the crowd, right, yeah, it can go flat. Yeah. So this whole amazing day goes right up to the top, and it can go flat. Yeah. Right? There, are, there, are, there are bands out there, now, there are who, bands who out have... There. DJs as part, it could be their drummer, could yeah. be their singer, in yeah, Brian's exactly. case, who do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. But admittedly, there are bands out there who don't. Yeah. But I, I think it comes back to the couple themselves. Like, if you have a couple who are, are, are into their music, and like, we say, when I got married, and I'm, I'm yeah. married 14 years ago as well, Mick, actually, never mentioned that before, but um, we had a very good band. They were fantastic, but it was more suitable to <laughs> the crowd that we had. So we had a lot of older people at the wedding. Yep. Um, you know, it would have been towards my my parents' generation. They liked the waltzes, they liked the, the, the dancing like that. Yep. The disco is what I was looking forward to. Yeah. You know, so that's, I, I think it depends did you, on did, your, did you get a separate DJ for your wedding? We did a separate DJ. We had Kevin Flannery Kevin, for our DJ. Brilliant. And I never forget it. Kevin it was fantastic. Flannery. Kevin, we, if you are watching. I hope, I hope Kevin's watching DJ. because we, Kevin, we, Kevin we, would have been one, one of the yeah. guys I watched when I was growing up, right? Yeah. yeah. His style was way out there, right? Yeah. Huge fan. And I'm a good friend yeah. of Kevin as well. We, right, we yeah. had, we had Shamey Mack. Yeah, we had Shamey Mack for the first half. Mm. And then we had me for the second half. Yeah. <laughs> for I your own wedding? Yeah, I did. You, you DJ at your own yeah, wedding? Yeah, I did. Yeah, because yeah. oh he, wouldn't, he wouldn't pay Shamey the full price. <laughs> yeah, so I was just thinking, yeah. <laughs> it's just no, tight. Shaming off like shaming, price shaming here. Like so. after, I mean, you'll find out an awful lot no, about Mick tonight. I, he does the snow sets <laughs> for free cheese sandwiches <laughs> and for his own wedding, right, he wouldn't pay Shamey Mac the full price. It's all coming out now. I'm just letting you know, right, listen, I'm best friends in right, so I mean, I know this Have you any other secrets, you know? He forgot the rings tomorrow on my wedding. Oh, so it's, that's what it's yeah, about yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just waiting right. because we, we, were at the back of, uh, we were at the back of the cathedral and he says to me, have you got my whiskey? I says, what? Where is it? I need it right now. There's no whiskey. I, I, I am a nervous wrecker and I need a whiskey. So there was I, no whiskey. I had to get a taxi down to the off license. Is all right. <laughs> I'm going to jump into <laughs> social media here because the, okay. the, the, this thing has lit up. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Thomas Cawley, if anyone can get a room up on its feet, it's Scruffy Duffy. Oh, well, thank you very much, Thomas. Tommy Elliott is after piping in there about the last question about band versus yeah. band DJ yeah, it'd yeah. versus DJ. It'd be interesting here with the boys. Too, Tommy, because, Tommy, yeah. Tommy says, Tommy says, answered like a politician, Scruff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Right. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Dine. I think it's Dynan. Yeah. Uh, what a performer! He did my brother's wedding in the Clarion in Sligo. And we came all the way from Ross Gray in Tipperary, and we still talk about what an unforgettable day. Ah, so well done, much. Scott. Thank you very Michal much. Michal Feely, really go on, Mr. Duffy. He's the man. Mary Clark from the Diamond Coast. Scruffy uh, did a great performance right. in the Diamond Coast last weekend for Alan and Ashling. They were raving about him the next day, especially about the dance-off, a true legend. So, yeah, uh, ah, another one, Nikki, Nikki Devins. In my eyes, it's not a true Sligo wedding unless you have Scruffy Duffy show, oh, best uh, DJ yeah. entertainer <laughs> around. Fantastic. And, and, and one more, one more. Karen Nigivnahan, I hope I pronounced that right. Hi, guys. We booked Scruff for our wedding on the recommendation of so many people and his passion for what he does sold it, on, uh, sold it to us. Can't wait to see him in action. Just wondering, though, aside from the audience engagement, are there any obstacles or challenges you come across when DJing? So there's a good one. I, I do. Question, yeah. I do know what? I'm so glad you asked that question. I'm going to give you a great tip now, right? It's a very simple tip, but believe you me, this makes an awful huge difference to your wedding. And we've, you can, o- we've, it, only got, we've only got about 13 minutes left now. <laughs> no, no, it's only, so, it's only something small, but you'd be, believe, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd be surprised how much of a difference. I'm a great believer in the smaller the space, the better the atmosphere. Brian will absolutely understand where I'm coming from with this as well, and you will absolutely yeah, know, yeah, right? Yeah. And you've seen this with rooms. It is very important that the bride and the groom talk to their wedding planner in the hotel and they ask them about the setup of their room. Because what happens after the meal is that they push all the tables to the back, they push them all over to the side, they leave this massive floor, the lights are on bright, uh, people have been during the meal, uh, 
and people are kind of scattered over the place. The band is up looking down, right, yeah, and this huge, big floor, and it is intimidating to people. And you have the right bar on the one side, you have the smoking area outside. Yeah, and it's so intimidating. But, and then sometimes what they do is they, they, they squeeze all these tables together. So I'm, I would say this, if there's any wedding planners, uh, I, this is w- w- one of the greatest tips ever, is to make it floor nice and small. It's to bring those tables bring in tables both in sides. Close, yeah. bring them to, yeah. even, even, even for the first half of the show, bring the tables on the floor, bring it in nice and tight, make it nice and compact. The difference that that small little kind of alteration will make uh, to your room is unbelievable. And another tip I'll give you as well. If you're in a room and this room can take four or 500 people, and on the day of your wedding, you're sitting at the top table and you have maybe 250 in the room. And you're looking down, it looks amazing, mm. right? The tables are lovely, beautifully spread out. But to entertain in that room that can hold 400 or 450 people, uh, for, I would sacrifice, personally speaking, if I was giving you a tip, I would sacrifice uh, the luck and the room for the meal for the entertainment afterwards. I would have it in the smaller room, right, with a better atmosphere. Or partition, or put up the yeah. partition. I'll put up the partition, right, because really what you've done, you've, you've sacrificed a whole room for an extra 30 people. But I'm sure if you talked to your wedding planner and if you talked to them, you know, in a nice way and asked them, listen, is there any way that you could accommodate this, right? The difference that that makes to your room is unbelievable, so that's right. The small, remember this, the smaller the space, the better the atmosphere. Trevor Matthews wants to know, your favourite venues to play from a music point of view? Listen, I'm going to tell you. Don't be political. No, 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 I'm not going to be Listen, listen, I'm a sucker for castles, yeah. Uh, my, one of my favourite venues, right, yeah, is a venue here in Sligo. It's a small, intimate venue. It's called Temple House. And I've, oh, I've yeah. always said this, right, yeah. It, you know, it does weddings it's for 100, 120 million plus, right. It's a beautiful... Now, listen, I like all the venues, but if I was, if I was, I, I like all of the venues. But this is, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, uh, this place has, this place is, 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 it's just something. There's something about it. It's really, it's an old. I've school. never, I've never done a gig out there. It's an old school. You're gonna go and check there. it out. And the people involved are lovely. But if you're looking for something intimate and small and lovely, it's 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 a lovely venue. It's got so much history to it. Mm. Uh, the rooms that you've been there, yep, right? yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's it's it's. It's an amazing, it's a really lovely, lovely place. Mm-hmm. Something small and intimate. Now, listen, for the bigger weddings, right, listen, you know, you've got to look at, you know, your Diamond Coast, your Radisson's, Castle Dargan's, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But for intimate and small, stuff like that, you know, you know Mercury Castle up and going as well, yeah. which I believe. Right. Yeah. Mercury looks, Castle I mean, looks They've done an amazing can't job can't up, up there, there as in well. July, can't wait. Uh, Castle Dargan has been refurbished, I think, at the moment as well. Very I think good. so. Yeah. It's like a park has just been refurbished. Yeah, I mean, exactly these, these, these yeah. But if People are asking, spending money on, yeah. on the premises. People are spending, yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're redoing them up again. It's like anything. You have to yeah. put the money back into their venues. The Radisson is going to be done up next I year as well. Can I, can I ask a question? You can, make. Yeah. Question. On your way home, what are you listening to? I don't listen to any music. Going to the venue, I don't listen to any music on the way home. All right, uh, I don't listen to any music. I don't kind of put no. you off, is it? Or kind of no, I, I listen. Believe you me, you work three, four nights a week. Music, music, music. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't listen. Well, to any music. Right but I have to say something. Right, the last couple of weeks, right, yeah, I've had a, a little bit of kind of downtime. I was chilling out, and I, uh, if I listen to any music off, uh, off, I listen to Motown, Motown and Soul. Hmm. Yeah. Really chill music. Now, Matt, you're not, not going to believe this, but I, I'm telling you, I'm a huge Elvis fan. Oh, right. oh yeah, huge Elvis fan. Never did that. Thank Massive you very much. You, you did a single way back much. when. Yeah, yeah, I did, did a single. Did you know that he did a single? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I did yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Suspicious yeah, yeah. Minds. Suspicious Minds. We went into the charts at number 30 and Hey Baby was coming out. And we got all these CDs. It went up to number 16, yeah, didn't yeah, it? I, I tell you, it's a small short story. We, we got all these CDs printed. We, got to know, we put them into uh, record stores on a Monday, and then we went and bought them back ourselves. Right? At that time, right, <laughs> you used to click them off, right? Yeah. So we were on all the west of Ireland buying back. I have a load. Yeah, and yeah. Anybody wants a CD from Suspicious Minds, I've boxed them. Yeah, let, us, let us know in the comment section below if you want uh, so we, to send you out a, a <laughs> private message so and we'll stick it out in the post. That was the you. old way with the record shop. Did click, click, click. This thing would go to Dublin. The, the, yeah, the video was yeah. Kieran, the, Kieran, was as a Kieran Carty did the video upstairs. Did the video, yeah. Up in the attic of yeah. uh, the Innisfree Hotel. Page. Check oh, it yes. out, yeah. You eat the horse, those yeah, lights, yeah. remember? Yeah. You won't, you won't actually recognise me in the video because there's only half of me now, right? Yeah, yeah. but it was Georgia it was, Gorman and George did the did, rap, uh, did uh, Elvis. Yeah. Georgie, that's, that's, that's what made me think of that. Story. Georgie did the Elvis, right? Because uh, I couldn't fit into it. Georgie could only fit that's into right, it, yeah. not me. Right? I think Brian will have to rename this reeling in the years. Yeah. You know, <laughs> reeling back the years or something. Um, okay, back to questions, guys. Um, I suppose one that I came across was kind of like, can a couple submit a do not? Play? Is there is there songs that? 
brides or couples ask you not to play oh, or is there yeah. certain songs that you won't play? No, absolutely. Do you listen, hate them? No, I do. Yeah. I do, <laughs> I do. I absolutely, no, no, listen, listen, some girls say, please don't play the Goa Girl, yeah. please do not play it. Uh, you know, don't do this. Oh yeah, absolutely. listen, there's certain songs and they don't mm. want them, right, Jeff, for whatever reasons, I will not play them. Especially yeah. if the ex-girlfriend is really is associated with that song. So. No, oh, right. certain, if the ex-girlfriend oh, is Caroline, yeah, yeah. you're putting yeah. on Sweet Caroline. Or absolutely. Something, you know? yeah. Yeah, that that wouldn't yeah. work. You know. But like, is there certain songs that you won't play, like say yourself? Like from well, listen, uh, once again, that's all down to reading the crowd, right, Jen? There are certain songs, they will just clear your floor. So why would you put that pressure on yourself, right, Jen? You yeah. only have that small window of opportunity of two to two and a half hours, get in there and rock that place. And you're starting, right? You know, the, the band hand the place over to you, rocking, mm. you know, which is brilliant. You know, They have a rocking place. So you just take it to the next level after that. You get in there with your sets. And every 15, 20 minutes, you're changing up your sets. You, know? you change yeah. a little bit of everything. Uh, listen. I, I, I always call myself, I'm not a mixer, I'm a blender. Yeah. And I blend a little <laughs> bit. That's a good right? line. I'm not a mixer, I'm a blender. I, but a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, I'm the first one to put my hands up, right? I am cheese. I love cheese because I'm big into fun. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cheese, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm the first like, one. I, I, think, I think the best way of kind of describing Scruff is, is kind of, he's not just a wedding DJ, he's like a wedding entertainer. He's kind yeah. of, you know, like a jack of all trades in regards yeah. to kind of getting that crowd going in the whole lot. And we talked about earlier on about motivating the crowds. Yeah. Because kind of, that was one of my questions, yeah. kind of like if nobody is dancing, how do you motivate a crowd? Well, listen, listen, I have a couple of old tricks, you know, and I, I listen. Don't I, be giving them uh, away no, now. Listen, listen, listen I do, this is what I the do, show is all about. Listen, I do, <laughs> I, I listen, I do dance offs with the bride and groom, yeah. I do emotion blackmail, conga. Um, you know, I do, uh, I have little tricks in Rock the trade. Listen, only if I'm asked for it, not really, right? Yeah. Only if I'm asked. You don't do the action set, uh, uh, you don't do the action set. With rock the boat and the macaroni. No, I, if I'm like asked that. for it, yeah. If the bride specifically, I'm always ask asked for it. For no, it. I, I don't. I don't. Do it. If I'm asked for that plate, you know. Okay. okay. But uh, no, I've little tricks myself that I've been using over the years, right? Yeah, right. To get them out, and sometimes you basically just and and the lads who are watching the DJs watching one another. Side, sometimes you basically just have to stop the music. You got to go out on the floor and you got to grab that wedding, yeah. you know. Yeah, and you've got exactly. to grab it and bring it back. And, and only then, right, yeah, right. And, that, and then there's a secret there, too, that you don't look <laughs> on the floor, that you don't look desperate, <laughs> that you go out there and you've got to bring this wedding back. You've got to be quick, but you have to have yeah. the confidence to do it. And sometimes, you know, very, very rarely, but sometimes a wedding needs that. It needs yeah. a good shake-up, right, yeah. Because for whatever reason, they're tired or it's not just happening on night, right, yeah. or the crowd's not mixing, you've got to go and bring that back, you know? Like, one thing I've, I've, I've heard kind of numerous times is that, like, DJs hate getting kind of people coming up going, uh, do you know uh, the, 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 that song that, song oh, that yeah. you played yeah, at, yeah. at the wedding? Okay, yeah, <laughs> and the home of you bars. Nine like, times out of ten, you're able, of nine times people, out of ten yeah, yeah. you are able to figure out through what a process of elimination, what song <laughs> what they're song looking want. for. I suppose the, the greatest trick in the book is, right, yeah, 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 uh, five minutes, yeah, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes, yeah, yeah. five minutes, five minutes, you have to, because listen, these people in there, they've had a few drinks, they're yeah. in good form that day, right, yeah. Uh, you're not playing their song for whatever reason. Listen, it mightn't, it mightn't fit in with the set. It's not because it, you don't like the song it, or anything it just, like that. It's just, just that you mightn't it, like the set. It just doesn't fit in with, at, with the set at that time, right? And now, you can't explain that to them, yeah. right? <laughs> They're not going to listen yeah, to exactly, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, listen, sometimes people think that because you're exposed, you're there on stage, sometimes they think they're there to tell you what to do. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. Right? You're there specifically for the bride and groom to go and rock that floor. And whatever means it takes to rock it, then you know, that's exactly what you'll do. And sometimes people will come up to you and ask for a song that you mightn't have thought of. Yeah, and you'll exactly. say, oh, great tune. <laughs> yeah, and classic. that'll take you down a different direction. And <laughs> yeah. you get another 15 minutes from going down that you know, direction. The classic one was uh, a couple of weeks ago, this lady came up to me and she said, listen, I don't think you're... I, I just think, don't think you're facilitating the crowd. And I looked over her shoulder and the place was rocking. <laughs> and I said, well, I said... Just didn't play her song. I said, I said, you know, I said I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Well, you should be, she says. It's, you know, you're just not facilitating the crowd here. But I said, the, the floor is rocking, I said, you know. Yeah, well, it's just not rocking for me. Well, I said, is there any particular song you want? And she asked me for a song and I did genuinely look through my dinosaur CDs, right, to look for it. And this is where the computer does come in. Uh-huh. Did I have that song? No, I didn't have no. the song. Right. Could I explain that to her? Oh, she was having none of it. You, know, you just ruined my night. You're the worst in the world. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and that's it. You've just ruined it. You've, you've, you ruined the wedding for me because you didn't play my oh song. Oh, my God. So okay. that was a tough one. Uh, and then I said, well, can I play another song from that particular group? No, no, absolutely not. It no, has, it to, has be to be that song. So, listen, you win some, you lose some. You know? yeah, exactly. David, David Griffin wants to know any chance the boys could do a song for us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Richard's the singer. <laughs> yeah, Richard's the singer. An amazing voice. Um, 
Maria Brown, I'm laughing here because I believe one of them sing, I believe I own one of them singles. Yeah. I think it was the Ark Anthem. So well oh, done. Oh, suspicious minds. Yeah, yeah, so we have one person who bought us anyway. Uh, Lorna Gibbon wants a single of you. Um, Brian Keane, uh, he was singing in the Ark most nights back in the day. Oh, that's when I was doing Thursdays and Sundays in the Ark. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant memories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see what else. Uh, Trevor Matthews, add the venues, even the ones... All oh, right, okay. Even the ones with the stairs. Do you like the ones with the stairs? Oh, they're even? a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, right. there's no easy way about it. Trevor which, is so right there, which, I think. Which is, which is the easiest <laughs> to get into? <laughs> Those ones up the stairs, and you're lugging this base bin up, and your back is broke. And, uh, and, and, you got, and, and, and Murphy's and Law, that's the one you'll injure yourself at, yeah? And 15 more times up and down the stairs for the different bits yeah, of gear. They, and, they're and the nightmares. Again. They're it's the a nightmares. long day, Scott, isn't it? It's, it's, it is a long day. Well, I find with the MC doing the main show now at the moment and doing the disc graphic. Listen, I, I, I'm gone in the morning at half 11. I'm in the venue at 12. No, I'm sorry, I'm in the venue around about 2 o'clock doing all my checks. I'm doing the MC during the meal, you know, from half 5 until about 9. Um, then... The band kicks in. Then, then, then the yeah, band, the band I, kicks in. You need to make kick, that clear yeah. to people that the band does kick in um, after you're finished yeah, your so MC like set. I have, have two options. Listen, listen, you get me for the MC journey and full show or MC journey meal and then the band uh, uh, of your choice can come in. And do then, their uh, thing. Yeah, and then I come back afterwards and, and rock do the standard, free after, do, your, which do means, your, your disco. Which means I've started the day off rock and free and then I send it home rock and free as well and the band... You know, That's just, a long day. Yeah, it's a long day. So That's a tough day. It's a tough day. But listen, I enjoy it. I love it. I, I love seeing at the end the bride and groom uh, on, uh, during the meal, the place rocking, and then at the end, like a great satisfaction on the place, do, absolutely rocking. Do you get a lot of the Do you get a lot of the crowd dancing on the stage next Listen to, uh, to the side, you get them. Doing I don't know what the problem is with the dance floor, but they all seem to want to dance get, on the stage. Do you, you get, get that? Do, you get them doing the river dance. Uh, of course, you get them doing it at the end with the, with the dance. They, 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 listen, you can't beat a bit of cheese at Trevor and the guys and Tommy and. Brendan and definitely Lloyd will understand. You can't beat the cheese at the end, right? The Venga boys, boom, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, of yeah. course, and listen, every DJ will tell you this, right? And I think the bands are, are actually doing a great job of the moments. Mainly 2000. It's, it's just one of those anthems. Right? Now, if you play to a UK crowd or a crowd from America, they stop. But they're they're kind of go what on song is that? But I, if you hit that with an Irish audience, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just go absolutely. Yeah, Maniac, Maniac 2000 is still. It's still. It's, 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 it's like there's certain songs. Uh, they're like wedding gold. You have to play them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we we, we play them twenty four seven. We play them all the time. We have to play them. Right? These are floor fillers, and you have to play them. Have you any idea how many gigs you've done at this stage? Oh, listen, I would, would, you, would you hazard a guess? Uh, hazard a guess. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, it's easily in its thousands, I'd say. Yeah, listen. I mean, you know me. Listen, I've, uh, I do everything from uh, you know a Disney card or kids show, you know, to you know to a, a kids show uh, to uh, shop mall promotions. I do a, a variety of everything because of the nature of the business, right? You you have to people be people want to, you to do different things. Yeah, you, yeah. you have to do di- different things. Uh, listen, I put the same energy in. I did a wee kids show on Sunday morning on a bank holiday up in the Yates Hotel. They're just outside Charlestown. I had forty kids in front of me and I rocked it. And then there was a, a Mayo footballer there, and he says, "Jesus, this is scruff." Oh, she said, put some energy. I said, I put the same energy into that yeah. that I would do with any other gig. Because believe you me, kids have no filter system. They will tell you how bad or how good you are. <laughs> so the same. So I do, it's, it's the same with every gig. If you set that standard for yourself, that you go into every gig with the same energy and enthusiasm, you're not, go, you're not go too far wrong. Just before we finish up, just before we finish up, pizza the pizza here. has landed. Pizza has arrived. Pizza has landed. Um, just before James Devon Scruffy absolutely rocked our wedding in February travelled all the way from Carlo he was unbelievable Niall Kennedy go on Scruff Master PJ Mahan I can do the Scruffy Dance legend what is it I can do the Scruffy Dance legend of a, of a dance I'm not sure what that means <laughs> it's the dance uh, Trevor Matthews probably. go on it's a bride's favourite song I don't know maybe that's from a comment earlier on Maria Brown I'm laughing here because one of them singers she owns so yeah, yeah. so that's it well done Listen, it's been great fun. So, uh, and thank you so much for You're having me. Welcome. Welcome. Really, welcome. really okay, enjoyed it. Before we go, yep. tell us more. How can people get in contact with Scruffy Duffy? Listen, you can get in contact with me on uh, Facebook, on the website. Um, uh, do definitely go onto my business page. You'll see all my videos. You'll see all my testimonies, so or even of all recent. Your business page is Scruffy Duffy Entertainment. DJ Scruffy, DJ, DJ Scruffy DJ, Duffy. DJ, DJ Scruffy Duffy. Okay, so DJ Scruffy Duffy. Yeah, get in contact. Okay. Check out the Facebook. Then give us a wee buzz. Send me on a message. Send me on your phone number. Um, I'm a great believer. Right, send me the number. I will buzz you back. Right, yeah. Email yeah. us and stuff. Listen, it gets lost. So I, I, 
I like to um, ring somebody back and talk to them, and then I like to meet them for a cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly. And then I take all their notes, we sit down, I do a lot of talk and I meet them before we get down to, you know, it's exactly okay. what they're looking so for. So basically, have a look on Facebook, see the videos, and also to uh, give you a call. Give me a call, listen, and uh, anybody looking for something different for the wedding, for the MC during the meal show, uh, uh, looking for something really different, definitely, definitely give me a buzz. I'm definitely a man, so yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's it, guys, for another episode. Uh, thank you to our guests, Scruffy Duffy, thank and you very DJ much, Baldy listen. Mick. Thank you very much, it's been and, brilliant. Uh, Thanks DJ a lot. DJ Brian McDermott in the background there as well. Thanks, as always, to Brian for producing the show, and for you at home for watching. Um, feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below we'll keep an eye on the comments uh, over the next half hour or so uh, if you have any questions uh, you can let us know there and we'll try and get back to you offline until next week uh, next Wednesday 8.30pm same time every week stationary next week Richard it's which stationary oh wedding stationary invitations yeah okay fantastic so wedding station next week so guys uh, until next Wednesday 8.30pm mywedinstore.ie Facebook page Good night, and thanks for watching thank you bye thanks a lot for watching cheers the Wedding Show is brought to you by MyWeddingStore.ie. Everything you need for your big day.